Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. We're a, a, a webinar, a webcast, an online show. Uh, the terminology is up for debate. Call us whatever you want. We are here live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you are Yes, Central Time. <laughs> Unable to join us on Wednesdays, we post all of our, we record our show every week and it's posted on our website and I'll show you that at the end of the show so you can see where to go to watch all of our shows, all of our previous ones. Um, we do a mixture of things here, presentations, mini training sessions, interviews, um, book reviews. Um, basically, it's, if it's library related, we'll have it on the show. We do bring in guest speakers sometimes from outside the library commission and sometimes we have library commission staff. And this morning, we have library commission staff, <laughs> and we'll show you what that means in a second. Um, today we're doing a special show about secrets of the NLC website, Nebraska <coughs> Library Commission website. Laura Johnson is our continuing education coordinator next to me here, and she came up with this idea. So, so I'm, go yeah. ahead and um, do, tell you what okay. we're going to do, and I'm going to... Good morning. Um, I'm going to be the ringmaster today. <laughs> uh, we've got a whole bunch of um, commission... <laughs> We've got a whole bunch of commission staff here to talk about um, different pages on the web on our website. Uh, we have a huge, huge website, and um, we'd really like to be sure that everybody was kind of fine and some of the cool stuff that's there. Um, I know I've turned corners a couple times and found things. And I went, oh, isn't that neat? <laughs> so I thought maybe everybody uh, would like to see a little tour. And why not bring a whole bunch of the people uh, who are responsible for the pieces of the website in to talk about it. Um, and then you get to see us. You get to meet all of, a whole bunch of staffers, too. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start off. We're going to kick off with Scott Schultz. He was the brave one. <laughs> um, and he's going to show you. What are you going to show, Scott? Well, I'm going to show the application for the Talking Book and Braille service. Um, I'm Scott, by the way. I'm the new acting director of the Talking Book and Braille service. Um, you may have seen David Ortley, the director, on the last few Encompass programs that we've done on Talking Books, and he did retire at the end of August, and um, I have uh, stepped in for the moment, so I think the last Talking Books Encompass thing we did was that uh, that thing about moving to the new right, West Wing location. Right, moving to the new, new space for us uh, yeah. in the hallway, yeah. Cool. I'm still mm -hmm. resting up from that, but uh, we're, uh, <laughs> we're, we're there, so. Maybe before you get started on this page, you could uh, do a very short thing about what Talking Book and Braille service is and does? Right, yeah, as far as best kept secrets of the website, I like to think of the Talking Book and Braille service as sort of a best kept secret um, available to patrons <laughs> across the state of Nebraska as well. Um, basically, we provide public library services to anyone with visual impairments or other kinds of print disabilities um, that can't hold a book or turn its pages. Um, and the books generally go back and forth through the mail. Um, we do also have access to a website called BARD, which stands for Braille and Audio Reading Download. Uh, that's hosted by the Library of Congress, their division, the National Library Service. And through that, people can download books and play them on a digital cartridge, or there are also mobile apps now for iOS and Android devices. Um, so there's mm -hmm. quite a few ways to access the service. Um, but to use the service, um, due to copyright, the, the whole system is sort of a closed situation mm -hmm. where people have to uh, fill out an application form, verify that they need to use the service, and then it remains sort of a closed system. Mm -hmm. um, so this application form is very, very important because without it, people can't actually access any of the materials that we have. Um, so I guess that's ultimately what I'm going to go through here. If you go to our main page on our website, Talking Books and Braille is down at the bottom of this left column here. And you'll go to Application Process. Let's just go to Application Information here. We do have some new things with our application. Um, the standard individual application form that we've used for years, and we do send this out to people in the mail as well in a, in a print edition, um, is this PDF file that you'll find here. Um, this is exactly the same as the, the printed one that we would send out. At the top of page one, you'll put in your contact information. Um, this is where books will be uh, ultimately mailed to you. And then this certification of eligibility portion is very important. Um, this portion generally has to be signed by a doctor. There's some additional information on page five, um, someone that can verify that you have a, a print-related disability that necessitates you using the service. Um, however, for any librarians out there who know of someone who needs to use the service, um, having access to these forms, and you can certainly help people to fill them out, 
Um, let's, in fact, let's go through the form a little bit here and we'll get more into uh, what to do with that in a moment. Um, as the person applies, if it's, if it's a child, um, the parent can put their contact information here. Um, if you do have some hearing loss in addition to vision loss, we do have um, some amplification devices that we can send as well, so there's a note about that here. And um, by law, the, it's a veteran's preference service, so there is a box to check uh, veteran status there as well. Um, so here it goes over just general applicant agreements. Um, the loan period for materials is six weeks, although if you're using the download side, obviously it's essentially infinite because you can just download what you need. Um, so the signature of the applicant goes here. Um, at this point, we go through some materials that people need to get, and there's a variety of check boxes for, for interests that people have. Um, books on, on cartridge are primarily what we uh, send back and forth through the mail. Um, some people are interested in BARD as well, so there's the second checkbox there is for that. And books recorded on cassette, there are not very many left. We're basically phasing those out and transitioning to the digital books now. But I was wondering, there's still some of those around, huh? Very, very few. There's just a few left from the Nebraska recording collection, and those are being digitized as well. So ultimately, there probably won't be any at all in three or four years, I would yeah. guess. Now, when you say digital cartridge, what what is that for people? Ah uh, yes, the cartridge is basically the same size as cassette tapes were. We send a special player that, that plays them, and essentially the technology behind it is that it's just a, a flash drive in a special shape. Um, so it contains a digital file that's in a proprietary format that has navigation as well as really nice, uh, good sounding audio, mm -hmm. um, and you can also navigate back and forth between you know, chapters, mm -hmm. uh, articles within a magazine, that sort of thing. Um, there's some nested navigation depending on the sophistication of the material. So if someone's reading, say, a cookbook, you can navigate from, say, the soup section into individual soup recipes and then into ingredient lists and step-by-step um, -step instructions, um, pretty much whatever is indicated by the material. So um, those things all get programmed in, and then we add those to the books and send those out to people. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, there's some specialized equipment that... Most folks don't generally spend a lot of time on that area. Um, we do have these exclusions. One thing about listening to books in audio is that oftentimes, um, say if you're in a care facility environment, you may not want to have lots of books that have descriptions of sex. If you have a roommate or something and listening to them, it's a little different than reading it um, in print. Um, so some people do like to indicate those. Uh, various different uh, reading levels. And then we go into some fairly detailed sets of subject breakdowns. Um, our reader advisor staff can go through and kind of pre-select a bunch of books for people mm -hmm. based on their interests. Um, there's also some blanks for letting us know about authors that a person is interested in, but a lot of it's done through subjects. And then here is this uh, page five that has some stuff uh, having to do with eligibility. Um, long story short on this stuff, for the most part, it's typically a, a doctor or a nurse that ends up signing the, that portion of the form, which is on page one. And so for librarians who are downloading this form or helping someone to fill out most of it, uh, for the most part, they're going to have to still print it at some point and send that to a person. Um, the Commission for the Blind does have permission to go ahead and verify that stuff for us, and they, they have an online printable form, which I'm going to back navigate out of here and go to this page again. So this just above where we were in this PDF version, the individual application form uh, that's fillable online, has the same information, but you can actually type it in here. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to help someone to fill out most of the form, just basically excluding the, that signature area for verifying eligibility, you can fill out the whole rest of the form and just print it and then have a, a doctor sign that, and they can deliver it to us that way. Um, our mailing address is on here, I believe at the top here, um, as well as our fax number here. You can fax them in at 402-471-6244. Um, the finished application can be scanned and emailed to us at nlc.talkingbook.draska.gov. Um, and so once you've helped someone fill this out, I think this is really helpful in a lot of ways because, again, if people are struggling with, with their vision, sometimes filling out these forms can be difficult. So um, if you do happen to go there and you want to help someone fill this out, um, you can print out, you know, the completed form will print with, populated with all of the options that, that are, are filled out at the time, and then a doctor can sign off on it for the end here, and then that, that can be delivered to us, and we'll get them signed up. I just want to mention quickly, too, because it looks like I'm about ready to pass the conch here. Yeah, um, there are that. several other application forms. Uh, facilities, these are mostly um, assisted living care facilities, uh, senior centers. Um, they can sign up as a facility to receive books if they have, say, like an activities director that wants to sort of coordinate 
uh, passing materials out throughout mm -hmm. their facility. Uh, there, there are similar forms for them here. And there's also a school form down here by a variety of student. Uh, well, there's the yeah. student form is basically an individual application and then the school application above that. Um, and if you happen to be tuning in to the Encompass Live show from another state, if you go down to alternative applications, um, this will take you to the National Library Service, which is a branch of the Library of Congress. And this is the primary form that, that they distribute. Um, people in any state can fill one of these out, and it will be directed to the, the appropriate regional library that serves their area. So, um, so that's kind of an overview of where all of those materials are at. And again, to use the service, people do have to fill out the application form. So it's it's um, we definitely don't want it to be a secret of the website. We want it to be <laughs> super important. So once people fill out this application form, um, will they then be contacted? That's right. Yeah, our reader advisor staff will get the form and give them a call and check in with them about. Um, what their basic needs are and make sure that everything on the form matches what they're actually interested in reading. And then we'll get them set up with a player that will be mailed to them for free in the mail, um, as well as books. And again, with those two, everything goes back and forth in the mail as free matter for the blind, so there's no cost for sending those back and forth. Um, so each morning we pull a bunch of books and send them out, and then later in the morning we process books that are coming back and get those back on the shelf. About how many books are there to choose from? Um, In-house, there's around... 30,000 now. On BARD, there's around 70,000 materials that are accessible. Those also include Braille and other, mm -hmm. other types of formats. And BARD is the downloadable. Yes. So anybody can just download them off the internet once that's right. they're approved. Right. And with BARD, I didn't mention BARD in the application form because that's yet another application. Uh, the reason for that is that in order to use BARD, a person has to have their own computer and high speed internet access and some computer skills as well because you'll have to be able. Um, you need to be able to check your email to deal with account information, to download books and unzip them, copy them onto cartridges, that sort of thing. And is that another thing that an activity director or a school library media specialist could do a facility sign up for BARD, or does that have to be individual? Generally, they want that to be individual, okay. yeah. That's right. So, yeah, and because it's a little bit more complicated, um, it w in a way it would be nice to have that all just part of one form, but because we don't really have, I mean, we're librarians as opposed to tech support people, so... Um, we can't really help people past a certain point, you know, with figuring out what's happening with their computer at home. Um, so part of the the uh, online application form for BARD is just to sort of reinforce that they can um, deal with the technology involved. But if and if people have questions about this, I mean, this is such a great service and a way that libraries can serve people who otherwise would find have difficulty reading. Right. But if people have any questions about this, they can always just call? Most definitely. Yeah, the 800 number is 800-742-7691, and that will get you to any of the reader's advisors. Um, locally in Lincoln, it's 471-4038. Terrific. Thank you, right. Scott. Absolutely. Thanks. Okay, who's up next? We have Lisa next. <laughs> Lisa Kelly, who's um, head of our information services. Yes. Yes, and I would like to take you to the reference ILL flyout to point out only two things, just two. <laughs> so we're going to start with books and series database, which is growing by the day. How many of you are series readers? Raise your hand. Hard not to be. Okay, <laughs> now how many of you have to read those books in order? Oh, well, I like them in order. Excellent. I always do. This is your best friend if you need to read books in order. This database became a project of the Talking Book and Braille and Reference Service. Talking Book and Braille was keeping paper lists of series, and I went to Vern several years ago and said, we should automate this. So this is a, a Vern product. So you can search three ways, but not combine them, as Vern notes here. So I'm going to show you, if you read, for example, the Jan Karen series, which you could look at by her name, you'll notice that we've got these series split up in a couple of different ways. And the DBs indicate what Scott was talking about, the digital format. So, those, so talking book readers, and we have a lot of talking book libraries through the country that use this. And so this has been a really valuable resource for them so that people can read their books in orders. And they're not all one for the money, two for the dough, A is for alibi, B is for burglar. Sometimes people make it a little hard. So um, this is a very long list. 
And if you're a Star Wars reader. Oh my gosh, yeah, there are way too many of those. I know that. And so um, I just want to say yeah. that our um, staff member, Anna Walter, really goes to great depths to make sure, look, 0 0.5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. <laughs> You've really got great order. And then Vern has made it possible to say you really like the way she writes. You can find all the things she's written and what series they are a part of. Man, this is slick. That's <laughs> a, smooth as a gravy sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> so mostly, Lisa, it's librarians and teachers that are using this, but no, but can you readers all over. Yeah. Um, so you, this will help you to read everything in order. If that's what you need to do, and I need to do it. So there you go. Any questions about the books and series? So if you search, if you know that the book you have is book three of the series, but mm -hmm. you don't know what the rest is, then you can search by the book. That's title. right. Mm -hmm. There we go. I'm using the same series over and over again. So you would see that it's number two in the series. It's part of this series written by that author, all so clickable. Click in. Yeah, yeah. And we must thank Vern for that. Thank you, Vern. The magic that is Vern. Now, does this include uh, both adult and children? Yes, the whole shoot and match. <laughs> so this brings me back to what if, but what if I can't find it? Well, then let us know. Mm -hmm. And you can contact me. And we will go to all the trouble to find out what that series is, and we'll put it in. Recently, a gentleman who worked at a bookstore in Missouri found all his favorite series weren't included. And for days and days, he sent us lists and lists and lists. So <laughs> it's only as good as our users. And of course, we have also some series that we're more attuned to put in there. But that's, that's your books and series database available to all, regardless of geography. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, we do have a comment. Uh, Claudette from our Adams Middle School Library says, thank you, Lisa, for the books and series database. It's a great resource. Yeah. Obviously, the schools use it. <laughs> it's useful in schools. Like yes, yeah. Yeah. and you'll notice that I did put customer comments over here because we mm -hmm. really do hear from, and one's from the Nevada State Library who helps their talking book patrons. We hear oh, from these nice. folks. So um, thank you for the comments about books and series. I love it. Um, okay. Number two, the only other thing I'm going to point out here is our book club kits. It's going in a f terribly different direction here. Um, for those of you who belong to a book club, want to start a book club, I need to emphasize that this is available to librarians only. You need to be a Nebraska librarian, a Nebraska school librarian. You can't just be good book club leader in Elwood, Nebraska. You need to always work through your librarian or your school librarian when you have a book club in town who wants to use this collection. We are happy to have it used, but in the rules for use, basically the most important one is you need to be a librarian. So when you call, please identify yourself that way and you're good to go. Uh, I want to point out the many ways you can search our over 1,000 titles that we now have available. <laughs> we broke the 1,000 mark. Nice. <laughs> uh, let's say you have an author that you want to search title. Um, we have several genres that you can search by. A keyword. For school teachers, we have listed these out by grade level, and that is the way that Amazon has it listed these. Uh, you've got 12 members in your book group. You need at least 12. You need a large print. You need any of these particular formats. Maybe you just want to look at the whole collection. Maybe just Nebraska authors, fiction, nonfiction. This is a recent edition, holiday books. And maybe you think, I just want to know what they've added in the last month, last couple of months. So you've got a myriad of ways that you can search this. Um, let's say that you are you want to read something by the author Barbara Kingsolver. Here's all the titles we have. It tells you how many copies we have. When available, we include discussion questions. You'll notice we also include if the Talking Book and Braille Library has that. So if you've got a reader in your group that needs to get that, they can make their own connection there. So you've decided you want to read The Bean Trees, and this is really cool. It will remind you how many copies we have. Once you fill this out, it will remain auto-filled out. So all you need to do is give us this very, 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 I can't stress this enough, very important information. When do you need them and when are you going to talk about them? That helps assess for us when we need to mail them out and when they're going to be due. There's no standard checkout. We're going to be flexible and adaptable to you. So when your book club leader comes to you and says, we need to find multiple copies of a book, I would suggest 
that you let them browse this collection and see what we've got before you go about interlibrary loan 10 copies of this because you're going to get 10 copies from 10 libraries and nobody needs to mess with that. You just want to get 10 copies in a box and hand them out. So you can see we've got a real mixture of classics, kids' literature, all kinds of things. Any questions about books? And book, it's also book easier buckets? for the library themselves when they have to return them. They don't That's have to figure right. out which 10 libraries do these each go to. Postage they just to know. one. Instead Everything of goes back to the commission. Postage to 10. <laughs> Any I just questions? wanted to mention, we always have book club kits for the One Book, One Nebraska of the year, don't we? No, not until after One Book. Oh, when One, one, one Book, One yes. starts. Yes, yes. For yes. One Book, Nebraska, I bet we'll have books in 2016, yes? Yes, we will. We've got, oh, right now we've got a bunch of kits, and we'll have some for next year. Richard wants me to say, you're responsible for the postage <laughs> to return them. <laughs> but oh, we pay for this. The Library but, Commission pays for the postage. But not to receive the them. Oh, yeah. okay. You pay postage to return them. Just like any ILL that you've done. <laughs> exactly. Any other questions? Any other questions? Type, as we're going through this, just a reminder, type in your questions as you're here as they're talking. Um, so we can get through everybody and get through all your questions. All right. Nothing came up. <coughs> there we go back to the front page. Oh, that's terrific. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> and next up is Deborah. Mm -hmm. Deborah Dragos. Can you Deborah. remember the name of my department? I can. <laughs> <laughs> and the Director of Technology and Access Services. Uh -huh. You're just dropping all of this because you're retiring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shortly. <laughs> Okay, um, the things that I am going to talk about today are related just to Nebraska libraries. We have a flyout here called the Discounts and Group Purchases. The first thing that I'm going to talk about on this isn't exactly a group purchase. It's a purchase that it's related to a purchase that we make for um, all Nebraska libraries, which is. Nebraska, the databases in Nebraska Access, and we have li the Librarian's Toolbox, which has resources to help you use Nebraska Access in your library and to promote it to your patrons, okay? So we've put up information on authentication options, and I'm just going to go into each one of these very briefly. You, if you have static IPs, for example, you can set up IP authentication within your library. For those libraries that do not have static IP or um, have patrons who wish to use these databases at home, we do send passwords out to you twice a year. So all the information on the authentication options is listed here. And I'll go back. We do have uh, help information here. If any of you attended the database roadshows that Elena Novotny and Susan Nisley did this um, fall, you will recognize the handouts here that you received from them. For those of you who weren't able to make it to a database roadshow, you're certainly welcome to come in and look at any of these handouts. Now, Elena and Susan have said these probably aren't handouts that you would necessarily give directly to a patron, but you can certainly um, train your other staff members within the library, and you can certainly um, revise them into a handout for your patrons if you would like. Whoops. Okay. Some libraries, uh, like if you have your own web page, like to put a link to Nebraska Access as a whole or sometimes to each database and you can get the information from this website on that. Now are there WordPress plugins for this that's easy? Do you have the WordPress if you go on Nebraska Libraries on the web? Or? Um, actually if you if you go through us for your website using WordPress those are actually preloaded. Yeah, Nebraska that's what Access. I Yes. We do have a mailing list for Nebraska Access. So if, if you um, are not on this mailing list, the Nebraska Access for Lib, we do recommend that at least one of the staff in your libraries be signed up for this mailing list so that you find out when things are changing, if there's sometimes um, a database will be down uh, 
over a certain time period because of maintenance that the vendor's doing or you know some other problem could be going on and this is how we send out that information so you'd want somebody on that mailing list Oops, sorry there is a list of participating libraries I won't go into that but if you're not sure you can always go in and look and make and verify that you are on that list to get access to these databases. If you're not, you can go into the registration form and request that you be set up. If you're not listed in the participating libraries, you do not get a password to get in. So you do need to come through us for that. We also, have, oh, yes, Sally. And there's no charge for registration. No, there's no charge for registration. Just checking. The Nebraska Access was, um, the contract allows us to give access to all Nebraska residents. Um, the only limitation is you cannot access it through a corporate library. However, all, um, Public libraries, academic libraries, K-12 libraries, and most special libraries can um, be, participate in this. Okay. We also have promotional materials such as business cards that be, can be customized, handouts uh, both for public libraries and K-12 schools that can be customized, and more information. This is actually a, a link back to whoops, the uh, other <clears throat> page that I mentioned earlier and we did have a press release that we created when we went to our new list of databases that became available in uh, July as of July 1st. So that's the librarian's toolbox. Um, I'll just mention if you don't remember that it's available under the discounts and group purchases flyout, you can type librarian's toolbox in our search box and it will come up also. Type okay. in toolbox, see if it just comes up with toolbox. I think it does. It does. Is there anything else we call a toolbox? I don't think so. Nope. Sweet. There it is. Yeah, it's the best bet. It's the best bet. <laughs> yeah, best the bet. Okay. <laughs> okay. The other things that I wanted to point out today were the discounts that we have negotiated for Nebraska libraries. Okay. There are three main groupings, the books and supplies, conferences, and database and e-resources. I'll go to conferences first. Basically, there are two that we um, have, three, I guess, sorry. I keep forgetting the web search university. Um, if you come through us, you do get a fairly substantial discount for the computers and libraries, internet librarian, and Web Search University conferences. This information is updated before each conference um, starts. Actually, this one um, just took place at the end of last month, and so uh, this one's no longer valid, but we just haven't taken it down because it's only been a week or two. And it'll re so come up again next year. It will come year, up so again next yeah. year, yes. Okay. The other... Um, Let's see, I'm going to jump to, we also have links from each of the pages to the other types of discounts that you can get. So I'm going to the discounts on books and supplies next. We have worked with various types of vendors uh, for library materials and supplies. So here you see security tapes, RFID tags, um, and things of that nature. Uh, we have bags for security purposes, fabric bags, and other things. Um, just a wide variety. So Baker and Taylor, Ingram, Gumdrop Books, Book Jobbers, where you can get uh, library materials um, with, uh, with discounts. You do need to come through this page and find the information on how to get that discount. So and I'm, Baker and Taylor does not allow us to share the discounts on the website, so I'm going to scroll down here a bit. Sorry. You can close your eyes. If well, you there's a lot to. of stuff on this page. <laughs> oh, this is yeah. a long page. Okay. We have Ingram uh, Library Services here as an example. If you are in a public or academic library and you're looking at buying a hardcover book, you can get it for at a 41.5% discount. 
that's a better rate than you can get at your local bookstores and um, it's often a better discount than you can get even at Amazon. I won't say always, but it is often. Okay. So the moral so, of the story is shop around. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and or shop these, these yeah. book, these are book jobbers. These are people right. who are, are in the business of selling books mm -hmm. to yep. libraries. To yeah. Libraries. Yes. 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 Okay, the other page that I'm going, last page I'm going to go to is the discounts on databases and e-resources. We have also worked with many, 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 many vendors to get discounts. Sometimes the discounts are based on the number of libraries participating. Sometimes it's based on um, just a flat fee on, related to the type of library that is subscribing. So for example, if we go to Britannica Online, if that's the database that you're interested in, or you're interest, sorry, you're interested in some of the databases through Britannica Online, we do always provide a description of the resource. So you'll see there are several databases that they offer through us. Then we provide you with pricing information, sometimes such as in this case, the discounts and pricing are listed out here. Other times it does say that you do need to contact us because the vendor does not want to publicize the discount. But we, all, we always require that they give us a discount before we list the product on this web page. Okay? So you'll notice that there is pricing based on the type of library, and you need to give us, if you're a, a, an academic, uh, an FTE, um, if you're uh, a K-12 school, how many enrolled students you have, public library, the total population that you serve, et cetera, okay? After the pricing, we do give you the subscription terms. In some cases, it's flexible in this particular case. It is set from June 1st through May 31st. And it does tell you that there's a deadline which passed because it started, this year started June 1st, 2015. You can, as it, say, as it says, come in later, but you'll still be charged the full year's cost. They do not prorate, okay? They do have some print materials that are available. It tells you how to place an order. It tells you who to contact for tech support, how to get usage statistics, and then it gives you some, uh, here we have some additional information on how to actually access each database once you've subscribed. And can people get trials? Okay, yes. Um, okay, let's go back up to the top. You can close your eyes again, I'm scooting here. Um, also under the discounts and group purchases, we have information on trials. There are a couple different ways you can do trials. Sometimes we do statewide trials, and um, we have a page that tells you which trials are going on currently. Um, and we set that up with the vendor and provide a password and other information uh, sometimes on this page, sometimes just via our mailing list, which is the trial mailing list. And anyone can sign up for the trial mailing list. We send out information whenever there is a statewide trial. A lot of the vendors will also allow you to contact them directly to have individual trials. So in other words, if you, were, you thought you might be interested in a database, they'd let you try it out a little bit. Yes. Well, I wouldn't buy shoes without trying them out. <laughs> I do it all the time. Yeah. You know about Zappos? <laughs> well, yeah, there is. <laughs> Online, <Yeah>. you know. <laughs> but I so, hear you. Yeah. So this is great. Okay. Thank you. And next we are going to have um, Craig. He's going to talk about WordPress. Craig's kind of one of our new faces. I am. Thank you for having me. Introduce. Oh, introduce Please. yourself. Come on, okay. tell us. <laughs> Hi, I'm Greg Lefteroff. I'm the new uh, technology innovation librarian here at the commission. And my portion of our website is actually devoted to providing websites for Nebraska libraries. And this is a service we provide for free. 
no cost to you. So um, you can get there from this page by going to the navigation menu, excuse me, under library management. We've got websites for Nebraska libraries right over here. Or you can go up to the top and search our site. If you just put in websites, you can click right here and go straight to the link. And that link will go to our participation page, and this has information about um, what's involved in getting the website set up, what you can expect in terms of time to keep it updated and to add content, what we do on our end, and then scrolling all the way to the bottom, this is a video that um, goes about 70 minutes, has all sorts of detailed information and a very thorough explanation of how the process works. Once you go through this page, I would actually recommend that you look at our participating libraries list. We use a platform called WordPress, and it allows for a lot of variation in terms of look and navigation. So let me just show you some of the sites we have active right now. This would be Hooper Public Library. It's got kind of a green theme, lots of images, navigation here at the top. But if we go down to one of our newer members here, Palisade, it looks completely different. Um, and the navigation allows for a little animation here. Oh, nice. So you've got some movement at oh. the top. And down to Stromsburg, which again is very visual uh, yeah. with the navigation below this big image. So there's a lot that you can do in terms of customization with the sites. Even though it's pretty robust uh, as far as features and appearance and navigation, it's very easy to use. Mm -hmm. You basically type in text, you move things around by clicking and dragging, and I'm always here to help you get started and support you after the fact. And you don't really have to know HTML to do this. No, you don't have to know very much in terms of code at all. It's, it's very um, visual, essentially. You just click and drag and type things in. Well, that's a long list of libraries that are participating, so it must be working pretty well. <laughs> I, I'd like to think so. We're actually hearing about 100 members at this point. So. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. um, if you are interested in participating or you have any questions, we do have a contact page up here at the top. My telephone number is here, or you can just fill out this form with your information and any questions you might have, and that would go straight to my email. So. And Craig, there's no charge to a library that wants to do this with us. Right. Provided you're a public library in Nebraska, um, there's no charge in, involved. Free website, free hosting, free everything. Yeah. We need to have to change that header soon, more than 50, if we break that 100 mark. We've been discussing that. <laughs> <laughs> Is there going to be a prize for being the 100th one? Um, sure. <laughs> okay. So there's, and there's training, on, on uh, online training. We do have training involved. We have videos available. We also have... Um, a document here that has text with screenshots so you don't have to sit down and watch an entire video you can go straight to the information you need great all right that's great all right well thank you oh, no really a nice service for people okay and next we have richard oh. who's i knew going to be talk surprised. about I didn't know when I was the be trustee angry. handbook the new trustee oh. handbook actually i was going to talk about accreditation and certifications did I get it wrong? Uh huh. Okay. Introduction. Um, who are you? Who are you? Richard? Oh, I'm Richard Miller, Director of <laughs> Library Development, and Laura and I have had a miscommunication. She probably said it correctly, and I misunderstood. So, yes. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's go here to this one and see if we can find what we're talking about. There's the library board manual. Yes. This is brand new, it's online. We will never do it in paper again, <laughs> ever. I was part of the group that did this back and produced it back in 2006, and it was a very painful process. <laughs> Laura Johnson, who shortly should retire, has to receive credit for this, for putting it online. I don't, really. Tessa <clears throat> Terry is And Tessa Terry, who's on our staff, actually put it together. This is really excellent. It's, like, it's, it's wonderful. There are some PDFs within it itself. But I did find out, we had a, a library director call the other day and said, I've got three new board members. I really need the whole manual. They can print it off by going here if they want to. They can go to each chapter and print it off. Or, um, yeah, I guess they have to do chapter by chapter, don't they? Yeah. 
So they can go to a chapter and just hit print and those will print off. There will be some white spaces because there's things like a quotes that we pulled out on the side and so forth, but it's not bad looking. I mentioned earlier that there are some of these that are PDFs like this one in particular <clears throat> is of special interest to most libraries about the responsibility of the library board versus the responsibility of the library director because sometimes they get confused. So some of these things we have done, we put in PDF. Um, they're really, what, one of the reasons that Laura really wanted to make this online was because obviously the stuff from 2006 is way out of date because it's on paper. Now we can update each chapter. Uh, we, in fact, I think Laura has recommended that we actually do this on a regular basis in library development. Of course, she won't be here to tell us to do it, but <laughs> we will probably do this, look at chapters, keep them up to date, make sure the links are okay and so forth. I don't know what else to say about this, except it's really, it's really well done. And uh, there is a sample self-evaluation for boards at the end here, which we took from the old board manual. It's still good. It's a PDF again, in case you want to have boards evaluate. You want to click on that PDF? <clears throat> you can print this off or do it during a board meeting. As you know, our library boards have to accumulate uh, 20 hours for every three-year period for the board. If the board decided they wanted to <clears throat> use this during a board meeting and then discuss it, they could certainly earn CE hours for doing this. So there are all kinds of ways of uh, of doing this sort of thing. It's really an excellent tool. Is it Laura, keyword searchable? Mm -hmm. it, um, it, it actually, if we can go all the way back up to the top, sure. you see that you, you can there's a top link at the right bottom. See where it says top? Yeah. Um, you can navigate from chapter to chapter, or each chapter heading is a link. So you can move through it, the, the navigation. Um, so, for instance, if you wanted to know about board certificate renewal, you could just go down and click on that, and it would pop to that right away. Is the keyword searchable? There's no. no search function. Well, that might be something. There's not like a that. search well, function. Within each chapter, you could search the page. You certainly, yes. Yeah, you can oh, do yeah. a find sure. in, on that. the page. I don't know if the questions you could hear, there was the questions where is a keyword searchable, and you can do word, you could do a search within each chapter as well. Control F is right. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's all online. Say, See? Control, say control F is Control F. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. F for find. <laughs> for find. Thank you. But it, it also has some. Um, links to additional resources, as we said, printable uh, forms when they're important. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you, Laura. Sorry I didn't read what you sent me. No, okay. okay. Can I talk briefly about accreditation anyway? Uh-uh. We okay, have time. You got two minutes. Two minutes. Here we go. Oh, yeah. so. Okay. I want to just say briefly that we are wrapping up uh, Library accreditation right now, we had 88 public libraries who were trying for accreditation. It was a huge block of people. We have a few stragglers to wrap up, but mostly it's done. And we will be contacting the libraries that are going to be up for accreditation in 2016. If you'd like to know who that is, you can go down here to uh, status lookup to find out whether your library is up in 2016 or the year it expires. And I recommend strongly to you that right now, there in Ashland and Atkinson and so forth, that you work on your strategic plan because it's going to take you a while. You have almost a full year to get your strategic plan done. So please talk to your system director or to us about getting that done. Get going on it now. We will, we will send a message to all those libraries that are up in 2016 or all those libraries that sent in their annual statistics but are currently unaccredited. Thank you. Thank you for letting me do that advertising yeah, okay. spot. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Who's next? Okay. And next we have Vern. And Vern's going to talk about search, which I think is like really important. Because <laughs> it is a big yeah. website. Being He's able to find twice things. already, so introduce yourself. Yeah, uh, oh, yes. Well, I'm Vern Bias, Computer Services Director. And as others may sort of alluded to, I think my topic is the most important one of all. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes. I try to be modest, but it's hard to be modest when you're talking about finding it things. It is, yes. Um, I was part of the team that helped to overhaul our website 
and we struggled for I don't know how long, long time trying to come up with a way to make it as easy as possible to find things because of the huge number of programs and the diversity of things. We, we looked at all the 50 state library websites. We looked at numerous other websites hoping somebody had found a magic bullet, a way to make these, this diversity more accessible, and we just didn't find anything that I think everybody struggles with it. So we reluctantly settled on the flyout menu approach, which is kind of a necessary evil. I would say it's not something that people love, but it kind of does the job. But <clears throat> to address, to try to address the weaknesses in that approach, we try to make the search robust enough that you can find virtually anything on the website, including the services people have talked about today, by just typing a quick search in the search box. Um, let's see. Also, as we designed the website, we tried to put finding aids for things that we thought people would be frequently looking for, all clustered up in this top right corner. So the search box is there. If you can't find what you're looking for, you can ask a librarian. You can look at the site map if you prefer to browse what's available on the site. <clears throat> if you're looking for a book, you can search the NLC catalog. If you're looking for library staff or libraries, you can search the directory. If you're looking for training or meetings, you can search the calendar. So it's kind of all clustered up there, the finding aids. Um, we've tilted the search. After analyzing search logs for continuously, we've tilted the search toward people who are a little less precise in their searching, uh, which seems to be the norm. I think using Google and Bing and things like that that are really good with taking really poor searches and finding what you're looking for has spoiled people to the point where they aren't as careful with searches as they might have been back in the days of dialogue or you know something like that. Yeah. So we've opted to make the search uh, more friendly for imprecise searches, but the flip side of that is if you're a careful searcher and a precise searcher, you're likely to find stray things that aren't quite on target for what you expected to find. And that was a trade-off that we, we reluctantly decided to make. Um, one, one special feature in our search site, we, the site is oriented to librarians. It's not oriented to the general public. So that allowed us to make certain assumptions when people make, enter a search term. For example, if I were to enter the term Lincoln, oops, it assumes that I probably am interested in Lincoln City Libraries or the Public Library in Lincoln. It also, by chance, there's a Lincoln Township Public Library. It finds that also. And I might point out that the items at the top of the list that are starred are what we call best bets. They're, it's a mechanism that we've spent a lot of time on to try to make the search bring the most relevant items right up to the top of the list. So we've spent a lot of time on that, and I think we have somewhere around 4,000 best bet terms currently, and that grows all the time. I try to regularly watch the search logs, see how people are searching, the terminology they're using, uh, what they're not finding, and we try to make adjustments continually for, for that sort of thing. So that's what I like It's great about this. It's not just all automated computers behind the scenes deciding what gets the most clicks. There's actual human beings, yes. <laughs> people looking at it and saying, ah, this is what they really are looking yeah. for. Yeah. And you know, Google has buildings full of people doing that. We have, we have you. In <laughs> my spare time, when I can squeeze it in. Okay. So considering that, I think it works reasonably well. Mm -hmm. One example of where this can really be helpful is libraries that have memorial names. Like mm -hmm. if you were looking for the library in Alma, its name is Hausch Memorial Public Library. So yeah. you can, instead of having to remember or type that, you can just type Alma. And nope. Nope. Oh, did I, oops, uh-oh. <laughs> and we know searchers do that too. 
Yes, yeah. they make those typos. And once in a while, if it's a common misspelling, we try to make adjustments for that within the search also. Um, I, our search engine, we use an engine called Zoom, which I'm really impressed with. It does a lot of things really well. It's fairly, it's affordable. It's within our price range. And there is a free version that's available for smaller sites. So if, if you're in the market for a search engine, that's one you might want to look at. Mm -hmm. We looked at dozens of them, and many were way out of our price range. Um, but Zoom, I, I'm pretty happy with. There are a few limitations that, that I suppose you get with just about any product. But overall, I think it does a pretty good job. Um, it does support the standard search mechanisms, such as uh, phrase searching. You can enclose a term in quotes and get a, only get hits that contain that precise phrase. As I was putting notes together for this little presentation, I, of course, found all sorts of things that I hadn't noticed previously that should have been adjusted and changed. And I made one change yesterday just because of that. Uh, the default description here is, um, I don't even remember what term they used here, but the descriptions they used were find any words, find all words. And I really had to look at that and think, what do they mean by that? So I, I realized it's probably confusing to everybody. So I changed it yesterday to use the terminology, Boolean terminology that I think librarians are accustomed to using. So of mm -hmm. course, open to, open to feedback about that. Um, you can use wildcards. The search engine does, um, can't, can't think of the term they use now, but it will search variations on a word. Plurals, uh, if you put in book, it'll search for book and books and probably booking. Um, so it, it does handle some of that sort of stuff automatically. One of the big limitations, probably the big limitation that we've run into is with the best bets. Um, they can only be done in such a way that a single word is a bet, serves as a best bet. So if you happen to enter a search term that contains more than one best bet, you may get a long list of hits, and not all may be totally relevant to what you searched. So I, I picked an example just to illustrate youth grants. <clears throat> Um, but you got a drop down that you would have been allowed to, right. to decide. That's what I want to show you next. Um, youth, the, the youth grants returns uh, relevant hits, youth grants for excellence, but it's not the very top hit. And this mentions youth grants, and this talks about youth grants. This one not so much, but it does use the term grants, so that's why I showed up. The way, the strategy that we've come up with to deal with that is this drop-down drop down list. So if you select youth grants from that, you'll get a much more targeted result. So I'd encourage you to use the drop-downs. It isn't just a convenience. It actually does enhance the search terms. Um, <coughs> the search, <coughs> excuse me, search does include the blog and the calendar. So if you're searching for training on something, you should be able to find it from this search as well. And I want to just take a quick minute to talk about a couple of other things. Uh, the calendar has its, <coughs> its own search engine. You can obviously list all events. You can search by location if you want to find something that's close to you. Um, you can do keyword searches. And one feat, I, I need to work on the help a little bit on both this and the main search, but one little known um, ability of this search is to search both forward and backward. <coughs> if you search by default, you're searching only for current events, but, and I can't show you this in Firefox, it only works in Internet Explorer, but if you enter a search, because Firefox doesn't support right clicks, and that's how we have this implemented. So that's on my to-do list to try to figure out a workaround for that. But if this was formerly an in-house ability only, so it's kind of 
hasn't fully blossomed into a, a public search. But if you right click on the search box, it'll search backward. And that may be handy if you attended an event and want to look up a speaker's name or something like that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we use that a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and listservs. That's, that's one other thing I just wanted to mention. As, as you probably know, we host a number of lists or mailing lists, I guess I should say. Whoops. There's a pop-up window. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Pop -up window? I didn't think so. Hmm. I don't, never run into that before. <laughs> <coughs> there is an archive of everything that's been posted to any of the listservs since day one. And you can put in a keyword. By default, you're searching all of them, but you can select a specific one if you're interested in that. And we do have um, those that are list have archives and parentheses following the name are archives of the old system uh, configuration. They're not obviously not being updated now, but for older things, that's one place you can look. By default, you're searching by keyword. You can also search by date, and you have to use a very specific format, three letters of the month followed by the year, and that will limit your search to just items from, from that month. So if you know you got a message and you, you <clears throat> foolishly discarded it from your email <laughs> inbox and now you need to know, you can go to the archive and find it. Yes, yes. Cool. And it really is a valuable resource that I yeah. think probably a lot of people aren't aware is out there. That is a little known secret. Yeah. It yeah. is. It's cool. <laughs> okay. So nice. I think given the time constraints, I could talk another hour about all this. <laughs> well, thank you, Vern. I, really, that... that Helps a lot of people to use this website. People in the room just learned yes, something. Yes, yeah. we did. And, yeah, just so anyone know, yeah, we are officially at 11 o'clock, but we'll go to the end until we get everybody um, spoke, speaking. We get all of our secrets out there. So yes. Not a problem. Probably yeah. maybe 10 more minutes, guys. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and next up we have Mary Jo. Hello, everyone. I'm Mary Jo Ryan. I'm the Communications Coordinator for the Nebraska Library Commission. Let me go back to the front page here. Um, I'm going to talk about two things uh, that are very important that you may not know about. Um, both of them are covered here under this category, Jobs, Careers, Now Hiring. Um, one of them is the upcoming internship grants that are due December 17th. And if you notice, we do have a little reminders uh, sticky note here. And If you wanted to, you could actually get there by going right here from the reminder. But I'm going to just take you there through the the flyout, um, it does say Jobs Careers Now Hiring, Library Jobs, and look at that, Internships. You could have also done what Vern did. You could have just typed Internships up here in Search Our Site. Let's go this way. And here you have all the information about the Internship Grant Program. I know that uh, some of you didn't even know we had an Internship Grant Program this year because we haven't had it for a couple of years. A lot of people have contacted me and said, when are we going to be able to hire internships again? And now is when you can. You can do that. Let me just move down here and tell, show you that there is quite a bit of information here. Um, the application cycle will be open until December 17th. That's your deadline. The award will be announced February 8th. Um, there'll be an Encompass Live right here on Wednesday morning, February 17th. I hope more people do know about it because last week's Encompass Live was about the It was program. about We the had internship. Mary Jo and Joanne McManus on last week. so. And this round of internships do have to be uh, completed by November 30th. Let me show you where the application is. Oh, by the way, a uh, reminder that it's only accredited Nebraska Public Libraries that can apply, but that you will receive special consideration if you're in a partnership with other libraries. So. If you have a school library and a public library, public library applies and it's a partnership. Um, the application form is right down here somewhere. I don't know where. Oh, well, first of all, here if you have questions, you can uh, contact Joy McManus, who's the manager of the program. And the find. Right was it? See, I can. I think it's yeah. up here. No, the other way. I saw it. 
All right, you guys. I'm going to show you this. Control F. Application. There we are. Questions down, for down, inquiries. Click here for a printable PDF. Oh, yeah. Um, but this is the actual form, the application form here. So anyway, it's on here. And you can see actually who else is getting involved. Okay. So I know we're in a hurry. We'll go back. Um, no, we won't. We'll go here. Back again to say you want to uh, either apply for a job in Nebraska Library or you want to list a job. We want to be sure and show you how to do that. It's very simple. Again, jobs, careers, now hiring. And you go over here to Nebraska Regional Jobs. And this page is the Job and Career Resources page. Um, the way this is set up is that you can advertise a job opening by and post it by doing this link here, or you can view some job openings. You can either view all the job openings that we know about in Nebraska and contiguous states, or you can view by location. If really all you're interested in is Nebraska, you can click here and get that. Or by keyword. If all you're interested in is a cataloging position, then you would probably put a keyword of technical services or cataloging in here. But let's just assume that you really want to look at all of them. And here they are. If you want them by state, you just click in this thing that says state, and there we are. You can see there's a couple of Colorado jobs, a few Iowa. Kansas, Missouri, and lots of openings in Nebraska. Get out there and apply for some jobs, folks. Um, say, for example, you want to apply for this Love Library Learning Commons manager job. You just click on it, and here's all the information that we have about that job. So again, this is a service that is, I think, really useful. The way it's set up, it's, it's good for our job hunters, and it's good for our libraries that are posting jobs. So it's got really two target markets. As you can probably tell, most of what you find on the Nebraska Library Commission webpage is really designed for Nebraska librarians. Mm -hmm. And we try to provide services through this webpage and, and resources and information. But this, by the way, the jobs actually could be used by other people, as you can see, other yeah. states. That's all that I have. Can you well, let's talk about um, submitting a job notice to us to get it on there? How does, how does someone get a their job listed on here. Oh, sure. Uh, jobs. Advertise a job opening in your library. Fill in this form. We just have a form. There you go. And I think sometimes if people don't haven't found the form, they might send an email to our reference desk and it gets it gets submitted that way too. Mm -hmm. But you can do it. You just fill this in. I love that it has spell trip check right down there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that nice? Thank you, <laughs> Vern, for putting spell check in. <laughs> and it will be submitted to staff here who will double check it and approve it. That's what I was wondering about, so too. So it yeah. won't be listed instantaneously. The moment that you post it, but we'll get it posted the first time we're back here and taking a look at emails. So and they do get reviewed yeah. before they get added to right. yes, list. Yeah, that's a good point. It doesn't go straight contact. up onto that. And the person that you list as contact for the job will be listed when it's about to expire, when it expires. Vern has created some great messaging, so it will let you know, still want to list it, are you good to let it go? So this is really a great recruitment tool. Yeah. It is, yeah. absolutely. And as you can see, other states are using it too, and we're happy yeah. that that works out yeah. that way. Although we don't really want them stealing our good library. <laughs> Okay. We'll, we'll yes. still there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mary Jo. You're okay, right. last but certainly not least, Miss Sally Snyder. I was going to say saving the best for last. But ah, okay. That sounds kind way. of obnoxious. No, we're already claimed the best. Oh, that's yeah. right. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're number two. Vern will be happy that I am using the thing that he says is the best to show you what I want to talk about. I'm Sally Snyder. I'm the uh, Children and Young Adult Library Services Coordinator for Nebraska. And I want to show you one thing that there's only one way that I know of to find this. And this is my, it's right now my handouts page. Anybody, if they decide they want to, can join me on the handouts page. Because I'm just going to type in handouts up here in that great search area and click and look. Nebraska Library Commission handouts. 
And if you click, it, this almost always comes up first, but it's not a best bet yet. Yeah, so fix that for me. <laughs> Thank you, Vern. But it almost always comes up first. Every once in a while, maybe Nebraska Access or somebody beats, beats there's me There's handouts out. in there, too, yeah. yeah. And right now, like I said, these are only my handouts that I've created for conferences and summer reading program workshops. And so I have um, my handouts for our conference last month, mm -hmm. Best New Children's Books. These are all PDF, so if you click on that, here is the handout as I as I had it for that session. And if we just back up one, you can see that I have gotten this one with the blurbs, as I call them. <laughs> so it's still it's just the handout page with my um, comments about the book popped in there. So that makes it at least twice as long as but if you're looking through and you don't have to you can print it out or you can just look through and say, what did she say about Juna's jar? I want to remember that before I order it. You can look and, and see, there it is right there. Um, I'm going to be getting, whoops, sorry, the teen books up pretty soon, and the summer reading program list up as well. I, I'm Something I wanted to mention is that when we started this page, it was in 2008. And um, Janet and I have been talking about archiving some of these, like maybe going up to just to have these go into a secret file where no one can find them but Janet. <laughs> so if you really want to find out what I talked about in 2008, you can email me and we can get it. But I don't really see a reason for, because these are mostly timely things that I'm talking about. And I don't think that a, a 2008 list is really going to help anybody much anymore unless you want to go back and see what you ordered of what I talked about, which I don't think anybody has time for that. So um, if you are adamantly against me archiving anything, send me an email, but I'm just uh, letting you know right now that that will probably be happening early next year, that we'll take some of these off of there, because I think really the best books of 2011 might not be your most helpful document. And because I'm here and I'm in control of things, for the moment, I'm going to type in performers. See, you didn't know I was going to do this. <laughs> Look, it's a best bet. Mm -hmm. If you type there in you presenters or performers, you can get the Nebraska Library Performers Database. Right now, this is all perf performers basically for families or teens or children or all three. And if you're, if you're saying, man, I really want to hire a magician for our summer reading program, you can type in something like magic and go and then anything any of the entries we have in here that say something about magic or magicians will pop up so you can look through there and see who's recommended it you can see that this was recommended by the eastern library system at the time they were having sessions of performers who were giving demonstrations so that's why their name is up there mostly there are they are recommended by particular libraries in nebraska Nobody can get on this list until a public library in Nebraska recommends them or the library system. Because I don't want an influx of performers from wherever saying, put me on your list, and none of us have an idea if they're really um, very good or not. And then you can see children and families is checked here, but not so much teens for the clowns. You can search by a particular individual if they know if you know their name. And um, you can search, or you can just look at the whole list. Let's just go see who all's on here. And then you can see they start, of course, with the amazing people with A, and then on down. And then the bizarre. bizarre. <laughs> and then bizarre, kapow, clowns, <laughs> and all kinds of performers. This database is not that large yet. And I would encourage librarians who have enjoyed a performer, or, or um, there are some like the Fontenelle Forest Raptor Recovery, program is in here. Any kind of presenter or performer that your your children, teens, and families have enjoyed, um, you can actually add them to this database yourself. Now I'm going to have to scroll down again. I'm trying to remember. What, no, I think I go back here. <laughs> See, I didn't practice this. Here you go. Libraries. Submit performers you would recommend. And you put them on there and you tell me about Tell us about them, a little description. Are they, um, are they people who are 
enacting a historic event by talking about it, or are they a, a storyteller? Give us what information, whatever contact information you have. And then any comments you, you might have, like our kids were enthralled or the families really enjoyed this. And mark whether you think it's teens, children, or families. And when you submit that, it will go to me and to Janet, and we'll look through and kind of double check some things before it actually ends up on the database. So that, again, is a little delay for you. But I really appreciate it if you decide to add somebody to the database. Okay. Yes, just Nebraska librarians, because only Nebraska librarians. And when we put your library name up there as recommending it, it's not your individual name. It's just the name of your library recommends this this performer. Okay. And somebody might contact you and say, Can you well, tell me more tell about, me more about yeah. what this performer presented? And, mm -hmm. and um, hopefully you'll still remember that performer. <laughs> well, it's a great way for people to share information yes. mm -hmm. about programs they can get in their library. So I think that's everybody today, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Um, we probably still have a few secrets left, because <laughs> you, you know. Um, but we hope that you've enjoyed uh, this today, and we hope that you've um, found some things that you didn't know about, because I think we all learned a little something here, mm -hmm. and we had fun doing this. So thank you, everybody. And um, we'll see you next week. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, everyone, for sticking around all the way to the end. Everybody who logged in is still here. Great. Whoa. Well, you guys obviously hear our speakers. But I mean, our our, our 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 listeners on the show. So thank you very much. Um, and I'll just use this as well to show you. Um, hopefully, yeah. Encompass Live website. Hey, look, we're a best bet. Um, so that will wrap it up for this week's show. Um, it is, um, oh, we have other staff, just sorry, um, we have staff in another room here who watch the show, and Janet, who is there, says, staff here in the room even learned a secret. Oh, good. Are you going to tell us what it is? Or <laughs> would be a secret, secret then. Yeah. <laughs> a secret so then. whoever's watching also learned something, too. We learned, some of us here learned some things we didn't know as well. That's great. So it was a success. Good. Somebody learned something we know is a success, yeah. Um, so that will wrap it up for this week's show. It will be on our website later today in the recording section, which if you scroll down just beneath our upcoming shows, is a list of all of our archives. We put them on um, here, and the videos are put on the our YouTube account. If there's PowerPoints, which there isn't today, but if there was, we have SlideShare and any links. I've collected all of the secret websites, the links for everything everybody talked about, so they'll be all there together in a group for you to get to all those hidden places that we showed you today. Um, and that next week's show I hope you join us for is Inspire Your Community with an Innovation Lab. Um, Maurice Coleman is a librarian in Maryland, um, a friend of mine. He had, They have a uh, lab there, one of these those makerspace type things, but they do lots of different things there. Um, Hartford County, Maryland, um, Public Library Innovation Lab, and he's going to talk about that um, with us next week to tell you about how they actually got it up to speed. Um, and you can see they used an underused space they had and how they actually got the thing up and running, um, the monetary and how it was all, you know, came about and everything. So you can see how you might get some ideas to create your own in your own library. Um, so please do sign up and join us for that or any of our other shows. Also, if you are on Facebook, Encompass Live is also on Facebook. We have a page there. I send reminders out here. As you can see, log in for today's show when the recordings are available. So if you're big on Facebook, definitely do go over there and follow us on Facebook. Other than that, then that wraps up for today. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank bye. you. Thank you. Bye. bye. Check out our website. Bye. Bye. -bye.